This is Valley News Live at noon. New for you at noon, FBI officials say they're investigating a shooting on the Spirit Lake Reservation. Authorities say it happened on Sunday night. One man was taken to the hospital. The FBI says there's no threat to the public, but they have not released the victim's condition and have not said if anyone was arrested. The Bureau of Indian Affairs is also investigating that incident. Also new at noon, a Minnesota man is facing several charges related to child pornography. Newly filed court documents show 2020 22 year old Joshua Finsky of Holly is charged with six felony counts of disseminating porno pornographic work involving involving minors and six felony counts of possession of child porn. The investigation started last August after tips that child porn was being uploaded and shared on Snapchat. Detectives executed a search warrant at a Moorhead address and seized two seized two of Finsky's cell phones. Court records allege investigators found more than 1,200 pictures and nearly 2,000 videos on those phones. In terms of weather, it's pretty nice outside, but temperatures could take a dip and more clouds will be moving into the area. Let's go to Summer Schnellbach with a quick look at the weather. Summer. Thank you so much, JC, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We are definitely seeing some sunny skies for today, and the clear skies this morning helped to keep temperatures a little bit more mild from what we've been the last several mornings. We didn't have any frost today. We had widespread temperatures in the 40s and even a 50 degree reading out in Waskish. Well, we did have one 39 degree reading out in Wadena, but primarily temperatures were in the 40s. Now you can see that bright blue sky, a couple of clouds starting to develop in the Southern Valley, as was in the forecast. We're at 66 in Fargo and Fergus Falls, 65 in Grand Fork, 62 Jamestown, 61 in Devils Lake and 64 in Bemidji. Looking at satellite, not a whole lot to show. Uh, might be a little hard to see, but we do have a few clouds developing down along the North Dakota, South Dakota border that will be lifting up from the south to the north. And that's on the very leading edge of the storm system down to our south in Kansas and even parts of Nebraska. And we could see some of that rain tomorrow. Today looking fairly dry, just with increasing cloud cover, temperatures warming into the upper 60s and JC a little bit of a southerly breeze. But coming up, I'll time out when we might see a couple of sprinkles here or there this afternoon and the rain chance for tomorrow. Now we don't have any severe weather going on right now, but I want you right. to take a look at what was going on in Texas. These are the first pictures coming in of what some storm chaser chasers are calling a monster tornado in Texas. Look at the size of this thing. It barely through the town of Morton yesterday, which is near the Texas Panhandle. People are out cleaning up, but there's been no word yet on damage in the area. A man is being treated for life threatening injuries following the crash of two pickups in the Central Valley. The Minnesota State Patrol says both drivers were heading south on Highway 59 near Bijou in Monoman County yesterday when they crashed side to side. 74 year old Ordell Kerfman of Faustin was rushed to a Fargo hospital. 26 year old Whitney Reed of Solway, Minnesota was not hurt. There's no indication if either driver was ticketed for that crash. President Biden is on his way back to the US after a five day trip to Asia. Global security concerns highlighted his last day of the trip when he met with the leaders of the quadrilateral security dialogue, commonly called the quad. Skylar Henry has more details from the White House. We're navigating a dark hour in our shared history. President Biden met with the leaders of Australia, Japan and India and said global security is threatened by Russia's attack on Ukraine. Putin is just trying to extinguish a culture. He's not even naming military targets anymore. He's taking out every school, every church, every every natural history museum. The world has to deal with it, and we are. India stands alone among the Quad members remaining neutral in Russia's war in Ukraine. And the president would not say whether he asked the prime minister to take a harder stance against Russia. But all four members say they cannot allow the same thing to happen in the Indo-Pacific. The fundamental principles of international order, territorial integrity and sovereignty, international law, human rights, must always be defended, regardless of where they're violated in the world. President Biden made international headlines Monday when he said the U.S. would provide military support for Taiwan if China invaded. The president insisted Tuesday that his comments were in line with standing U.S. policy. 
The policy has not changed at all. I stated that when I made my statement yesterday. The U.S. has maintained a policy of strategic ambiguity, reserving the right to use force without explicitly committing to do so. Mr. President, is the policy of strategic ambiguity towards Taiwan dead? No. While the meeting was taking place, Russian and Chinese fighter jets conducted military exercises over the Sea of Japan and the East China Sea. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. China criticized President Biden's comments saying Taiwan is a part of Chinese territory and it does not allow foreign interference in domestic affairs. Fleet Farm is teaming up with TAPS for Veterans to honor fallen soldiers on Memorial Day by participating in the third annual TAPS Across America. On Monday, buglers will sound TAPS at 3 p.m. at the Fargo store. Coming up at noon, lawmakers are trying to address the growing crisis of mental health issues among the country's youth. But next, the beautiful weather will continue, but we could see a bit of chances, a bit of changes as we head into the Memorial Day weekend.